Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at 7 Miles a Second by David Wojnarowicz, James Romberger, and Marguerite Van Cook. David originally wrote these words in the last years before his death in 1992 with James and Marguerite originally adapting the text to graphic form in 1996 and were somewhat surprisingly perhaps initially published by DC's Vertigo. This edition was published by Fantagraphics in 2013. Not rated per se, but this book was originally published by a mature imprint and starts out focused on Wojnarowicz's mid-childhood, where he has already clearly had to deal with a lot more than many do in their entire lifetime. Content notes for underage sex work, violence against sex workers, nudity, sex, and violence against animals. A high percentage of the book is fairly psychedelic. The whole book gives off a fairly grotesque vibe. So yeah, not a must read. Not previously familiar with the art of David Wojnarowicz, I am now in the process of dipping my toe into his work further. The introduction to his Wikipedia page is, quote, David Michael Wojnarowicz, born September 14th, 1954, died July 22, 1992, was an American painter, photographer, writer, filmmaker, performance artist, songwriter, slash recording artist, and AIDS activist prominent in the East Village art scene. He incorporated personal narratives influenced by his struggles with AIDS as well as his political activism and his art until his death from the disease in 1992. End quote. Clicking over to his website, Romberger describes himself as, quote, an American artist and cartoonist known for his depictions of New York's Lower East Side. Romberger's pastel drawings of the ravaged landscape of the Lower East Side and its citizens are in many public and private collections. Romberger has long contributed work to the political comics collective title World War III, illustrated his science fiction strip collaboration with Marguerite Van Cook was serialized through the 1980s and 1990s in various downtown literary magazines. His efforts for commercial comic publishers include his earliest work for Marvel Comics Epic Illustrated, DC Comics republished Romberger's work on Paradox Press Big Book series, the three-issue Renegade storyline in Jamie Delino's 12-part miniseries 2020 Visions, the 2009 graphic novel The Bronx Kill with writer Peter Milligan, and the 2011 graphic novel Aaron and Ahmed with writer and Guggenheim fellow Jay Cantor. He has worked for Image Comics NYC Mech and for NBM slash Paper Cuts Revamp of Tales from the Crypt. Fantagraphics released Romberger's and Van Cook's The Late Child and Other Animals, a multi-generation autobiography of Van Cook and her mother. It was simultaneously released in French in 2012, post-York, a multimedia collaboration with this Son Crosby was published by Uncivilized Books and nominated for an Eisner Award for Best Single Issue. He is currently working on the second issue. End quote. Scrolling through her Wikipedia page, apparently Van Cook and Rombergers are partners, which is cool, and she is described as, quote, an English artist, writer, musician, slash singer, and filmmaker. She was born in Portsmouth, England, and now resides in New York City on the Lower East Side in the East Village. Van Cook was the lead singer for The Innocents, a UK punk band who toured as opening act for The Clash and The Slits on the Sorted Out Tour. After this group disbanded, she joined Step and Razor, an all-female reggae band, as the bass player. They opened for Yellow Man in Harlem World. She continues to perform at downtown New York venues. Van Cook produced and directed the film Funky Shui in New York. Additionally, she appeared in David Wojnarowicz and Tommy Turner's film, Where Evil Dwells, as well as taking the role of Red Snapper in Neck Zed and Reverend Jen's series Electra Elf. End quote. What kind of keywords came to mind reading this graphic memoir? Color, scars, grit and grime, death, cityscape, and poverty. The synopsis over on Goodreads is, quote, the story of legendary artist David Wojnarowicz, written during the last years before his AIDS-related death in 1992, and drawn by James Romberger, with colors by Marguerite 
Van Cook. The graphic novel depicts Voynarovich's childhood of prostitution and drugs in the streets of Manhattan through his adulthood living with AIDS and his anger at the indifference of government and health agencies. It has become a cult classic amongst fans of literary and art comics, just as Voynarovich's influence and reputation have widened in the larger art world. Romberger and Van Cook's visuals give stunning life to Voynarovich's words, blending the gritty naturalism of Lower East Side street life with the hallucinatory psychedelic imagination that takes perfect advantage of the comics medium. This new edition will finally present the artwork as it was intended, oversized, and with Van Cook's elegant watercolors restored. It also includes several new pages created for this edition. End quote. Looking at the writing, after the first section, things began to swirl about in a dreamlike way and ends up fairly abstract. I feel like the length of the book really works well with this, not literal and slice of life quality. Scrolling through the Goodreads reviews, there was some suggestion it should have been longer or included more biographical details, etc., but I think that would have pushed it off this balance one way or another. Also felt like the art was well executed, the colors were masterful, the page layouts are fairly grounded, and lines are strong. Another good balance to the more abstract aspects of the story. My only critique is the paragraphs of text that appear near the end that are still laid out in all capitals, because that's what you do with type in comics, not taking into consideration that that only works for small stretches. Paragraphs of text should never be in all caps. But live and learn, I suppose. Moving along to the intersections I always try and look at, obviously memoir is one of those genres that is generally, but understandably, one note. Voynarovich embodies an abandoned gay child, a sickeningly common experience, fighting his way into adulthood through poverty, disease, and abuse with a powerful voice. There's a bit of visually represented racial diversity, but it's the furthest thing from the focus. As far as related works, I don't generally end up having much to say on this front, but this book really reminded me of so many things. For one, I suspect I can see the influence of this book on The Pervert, a semi-autobiographical comic I reviewed just over a year ago that also dealt with sex work. I was also already thinking of recommending War in the Neighborhood by Seth Tabachman as a tangentially related comic about a squatter's movement in the New York City Lower East Side that I read years ago, review reposted in 2020. And then it turned out that both Ramberger and Tabachman contributed to the anthology magazine World War III Illustrated. See my reviews of their 48th issue, Fight Fascism, back in 2020 as well. The final connection is that I hadn't noticed that Romberger also illustrated Aaron and Ahmed with writer Jake Cantor, a book I reviewed in I think the very first year on this channel. I keep meaning to revisit it, as obviously that video is no longer public, so perhaps this will be my final catalyst. To conclude, as I already warned, not a book for everyone, but as I've also already insinuated, an exquisite work. Five stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and organized anti capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.